Okay, I guess this is going to be part three of this ASH-30. Starting to work on these inner wing panels. And the spoilers are giving me a lot of grief. They're, there's no gap around the cover, spoiler cover. And they're getting stuck and they're not wanting to, um, to come up. So I can kind of pry on them and get them to come up and they drop down fine, but then they get stuck again. So um, I've been trying to nurse these edges with some sandpaper and get some clearance here because I want these to go up and down smoothly with no issues. The disappointments in this kit kind of continue. Um, this has some really ingenious linkage for the spoiler here. And as you can see this uh, arm is sticking almost 90 degrees straight up so when you pull the clevis to try to deploy the spoiler nothing happens because there's there's no there's no leverage unless you pull up but if you pull towards the the root nothing happens so okay apologies for the squeaking in the video this is an old airplane hanger and it's windy and it squeaks and there's absolutely nothing i can do about it so that's that okay back to the spoiler um Interesting, there's so much slop in all of this linkage. The spoiler assembly, assembly is so terrible that there, there's another pivot here, and then there's a clevis hooked up to that, and then that goes to the servo. And that thing moves around and jiggles a lot, and I can't get into it or do anything about it, but I realized that if I um, put a shim basically underneath this linkage, and kept the linkage from dropping down too far, I can get the spoiler to operate uh, smoothly. So I do have a shim in there at the moment and it's basically a, a piece of um, about three millimeter G10 plate that I just cut a rectangle out of. You can kind of see it in there. And I think what I'm gonna end up doing is just bonding that to the aluminum spoiler bay. And now this moves pretty good, and it was, like I said, hanging up on the front edge a lot. And this, I uh, sanded that and got that problem taken care of. And now with this guy here, um, it works pretty well. I don't know if I can show you how it works one-handed, but I'll give it a shot. See that? And all that was was just putting a shim underneath there so that this linkage doesn't bottom out too far. So I cut two of those so I have one for the other side of the wing as well. And yeah, that kind of uh, gives me a little bit of peace of mind that these spoilers are going to work fairly well. I don't like them. They're very sloppy and loose. And if you over tighten any of the screws, um, like for example, the screws that go in here, if you over tighten those, Everything binds up, obviously. Um, would have rather seen something with bearings or maybe some shims. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. Well, I've been messing around with these spoilers for quite a while. This is the right wing panel, and even with the shims that I put in here, um, this guy just won't operate. If I close the spoiler, oops, actually right now I've disconnected the coupler so let me connect that again and then I'll show you what I'm dealing with. Okay I've reconnected that clevis so we'll put the spoiler down and then I'm going to try to reach in here and grab the linkage with my hand. I'm tugging on it as hard as I can and the spoiler will not deploy. Um, the problem is with the geometry and the linkage in here uh, it's pretty frustrating to get this open. I'm gonna have to pry something underneath the spoiler and lift it up manually. So it's open again. Um, there's two clevises in here and they're attached with a bent piece of like three millimeter mild threaded rod, like mild steel. And it looks like they're just hand bent and the angle is different between the two panels because the other panel with the shim in there, I was able to get the spoiler to operate just fine. And that seems to have a sharper bend. 
problem is I can't get to the other clevis in here to unhook that linkage and pull it out. It's just buried in the wing. There's no way to get to it. Um, it's pretty frustrating, man. I mean, I think the uh, the owner of this model paid to pay that much money and have inoperable spoilers is, is kind of ridiculous. So right now I'm gonna um, unscrew the blades and take them off and see if I can get more access in here and try to figure something out. Well, I took the top portion of the spoiler off there and I was able to gain quite a bit more access. I actually managed through a lot of finagling to get this rod off. So I'm going to try to match this to the other rod and hopefully when I put it back together the spoiler will actually work. Oh, finally I think I cracked the code on this. Um, let's see if I can do this one handed. There we go. Oops. Um, so it works. I had to really play with the bend on that linkage I showed you. I had to kind of adjust the bend several times, reinstall it, and also the length. Um, the length was pretty critical too. It was too long and I shortened it and then it was too short and then kind of kept going back and forth there. Finally got things working. This thing when it retracts also kind of when it goes down, it goes towards the trailing edge. So I had to sand the back of that because that was basically binding against um, the, the lip in here. And I had to do a few little other things. Finally got it working. So, man, I'm glad that's over. Uh, next thing we're going to do is move on to actually getting spoiler servos in. These are the servos we're going to be using. These are Cha servos, Cha servos, HV150Hs, pretty chunky, chunky monkeys. And if I zoom in here, you can see 8.4 volts, almost 460 ounces of holding torque and two, almost 280 of operating torque, so really beefy servos, which is probably good. And uh, Thomas Lou frames again. This is how they're gonna look here. And I put this one in the bay and the horn, uh, the, the uppermost horn just barely clears right there, so we're looking good there, because I think we want the long arm on that. So that's all looking good. I gotta cut down the three millimeter rod in there a little bit. It's too long, so we'll cut that down and then we can put a clevis on there. This is the setup. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Got the rod shortened and I got the machine clevis on the arm there. And uh, yeah, everything looks good. So the next thing to do is to pull this out and then match the servos. So I'm gonna program them so they're both the same with the centers. And at center, the arm is going to be leaning forward or towards the tip, towards the spoiler, like, like it is now. And then we'll just prep everything to get bonded in. Got my epoxy ready here. Uh, both the servos are prepped. So you can see there's some plastic to protect the servo from the epoxy. And I've scuffed up all the surfaces that are going to um, get... Uh, get bonded and then in here I sanded the bay and wiped it down with some rubbing alcohol so we're basically ready to go ready to get the servo in okay we got both panels done servos are glued in so we'll just let these cure overnight and then we can uh, see how the spoilers actually operate under power okay well the spoiler servo installation is basically done I removed the plastic thread locked the screws I got the uh, pin secured in the arm with the e-clip and I put a drop of CA on all the clevises I could reach so that's as good as that's gonna get and I'll show you the way this the spoiler works got my servo tester hooked up here so that's working well um, I double checked these screws, they seem pretty tight, so that's okay. And then these screws here, 
they barely hang on by just a couple of threads and if you over tighten them it really binds things up so I took those out and put some thread lock on those and just kind of put them in hand tight I'm hoping it all stays together uh, this kind of concerns me here there's a lot of wiggle back and forth but maybe that's normal I don't know if you're familiar with these uh, feel free to chime in that's about as good as I could do though so um yeah the spoiler installation is done it took a lot of trial and error and modifying and bending and sanding and grinding but we got it done next thing to do is move on to the uh, flap servo installation. Not going to do that in this video, but I'll briefly go over what we're looking at. So for the flaps we have two servos, one near the tip of the inner panel and one out there at the root. And just one big control surface here. Um, so this is going to pose a, a, a real challenge because everything has to be installed identical. Uh, the length of the control rods, the length of the arms, the control horns, everything has to be exactly identical and the servos have to be centered exactly identical otherwise they're going to be fighting each other when both the servos move and that could cause um, super high current drain, burning up servos, burning wiring potentially crashing the model so that's going to be a really big challenge that's going to be next well, we'll wrap this video up right here. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, spoiler uh, installation on this ASH-30. And look forward to seeing you in the next one.